Hi everybody. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about some things that I think are, are pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to be talking about Raspberry Pi. I'm going to be talking about Open Plotter, RTL SDR, uh, which gives you AIS, and something called a Moticier hat. And for a lot of you guys, this probably sounds like gobbledygook. But the, the, the takeaway is that this is a very inexpensive way to set up a chart plotter um, and a chart plotter that receives AIS, right? Bunch of other stuff on top of that, but that's sort of the, the, the main kind of goal that we're gonna look at with this. So this came about uh, because of some conversations that I was having with Rebecca Childress and you know through her, uh, Patrick uh, as well. And if you're not familiar with, with them, uh, they're very accomplished sailors who uh, are currently sailing around the world uh, and their beautiful sailboat uh, a, uh, called uh, uh, Brickhouse, right? which is a great name for a boat. And they did a tour of their navigation system. On that tour on their, their YouTube channel, uh, I commented about something called Open Plotter. And to my surprise, they weren't familiar with it. And I think that I may have uh, assumed that this was just kind of common knowledge uh, because A, I live in California, so there's a lot of tech stuff around me. Uh, B, I come from a, a tech background, so it's something that I'm already kind of very aware of. So when I started looking at getting a boat, I just sort of naturally gravitated towards uh, looking at Raspberry Pi and seeing if there was some navigation stuff for it. And um, I think it's I think it's really really useful. So um, I'll give you the I'll give you just sort of the 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 ten second kind of summary of, of the whole thing, executive summary kind of deal. So with a couple pieces of hardware and software and not too much effort and very little technical know-how, right? You'll need to know a little bit and this might seem intimidating initially, but it's not very difficult. It's just a couple steps that you need to go know. And hopefully I'll lay it out in a way that'll make it sort of understandable for you. Uh, you can set up a system to receive AIS on your boat. Um, you can go ahead and have this run um, uh, OpenCPN and a number of other utilities that I think can dramatically increase uh, safety um, at sea because of the navigation capabilities uh, and AIS. And you can use this in one of two potential ways, right? So if you're somebody who already has a chart plotter and GPS and navigation and all that kind of stuff on your boat, um, you could go ahead and take uh, one of these little Raspberry Pi computers uh, because they're so small and you could go take that <clears throat> and you could go put it in your, your stove, Faraday cage, right? Uh, and if you got hit with electron, you know, lightning or anything kind of happened that took out your primary navigation equipment, you could go use this as a backup. So that's the first scenario. The second scenario is um, you are somebody who is um, not in a position to be able to afford expensive navigation equipment to go uh, put an AIS receiver on your boat. Um, you have older marine equipment. Uh, maybe you've got an older radar. Uh, maybe it's a, a NEMA 0183 system, something like that. You can take one of these little Raspberry Pi devices and you can use that to uh, really get most of the functionality that you would get with a much more expensive system. Um, there's also some stuff that I'm gonna talk about at the end of this, which I think is uh, particularly nice, especially related to the uh, marine device communication aspect of this. But that's really sort of secondary. Um, the, the primary things I think that are the takeaway is uh, for about or less than $150, uh, you can have a very nice system that allows you to go do chart plotting, uh, that allows you to go ahead and um, have AIS uh, and be able to potentially extend that further to take advantage of a lot of different things uh, on top of that. So that's the first piece. Um, on top of this video, which is gonna sort of function as an overview, I'll, I'll record some additional videos that kind of get into the specifics of each one of these components. So this is just sort of your overview. You can sort of decide if this is something that you wanna go look into. And then what I'll do is I'm going to set up a new channel for, for this uh, because uh, in the discussions with, uh, you know, 
Patrick and Rebecca, you know, it seemed like something that would be really nice to get out there so people could be aware of it. And um, I put a video up for them, but I put it on my, my personal channel. I don't want people sort of going over there because there's no, you know, just videos of my dog and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to go set up a channel. And then what I'll do is on that channel, uh, I'll upload some, some additional videos that go over how to go install um, Open Plotter on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and then it will go over each of the sort of additional pieces. Uh, and then maybe I'll sort of go down to my boat and, and take some video of the, um, the system in action showing AIS targets and, and things like that. So uh, this is going to be an overview. It's not going to have those other ones, but if you go to the same channel and I think um, uh, Patrick and Rebecca are going to um, sort of take this video and, and, and sort of use it uh, on their channel, which, uh, which is completely fine with me. I'm giving them hundred percent permission to do that. Uh, this will be creative commons. If anybody wants to go ahead and, Take this content and reuse it, you know, cut it up, whatever you want to go do with it. That's completely fine. I'm basically making this video because I think it's it's useful for people. And I think that AIS is incredibly important. And um, you know, it's it's something that could increase people's safety. So um if if by spending half an hour, 45 minutes talking about this, um that that could potentially save, you know, someone's life or something like that, that's that's uh, a you know, massive trade up. Uh, um, yeah. So do whatever you want with this, with this content. It's, this is not a, a money thing. I don't, I, I'm fine. Um, <laughs> so anyway, getting on to the, the conversation, All right? So, um, we're going to be talking about a number of different things in this, um, this, uh, this sort of, um, overview. And there's going to be a couple different pieces to it. Let me go back over here. I started this before, but I got interrupted by one of my, my students who is taking an online class with me. So there's a couple different pieces uh, that are going to go into this. Um, and the first piece is the Raspberry Pi, right? Let me go. Sorry, that's weird. Okay, let's go back down over here. Make a much bigger font size. Uh, the Raspberry Right, so that's the that's the, the first part. So the Raspberry Pi is a computer. Um, it's a it's a very low power computer. Um, it was designed to teach little kids programming, and despite the fact that you probably have never heard of these, uh, this is the third most popular computer in the world. Uh, so there's lots of these. Raspberry Pi as a platform is very 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 well proven. Uh, it's used in a lot of applications, uh, among which are um, in sort of industrial stuff. So <clears throat> the great thing about a Raspberry Pi is they're very small. They're the size of a, a deck of playing cards, basically. So um, this is in a case um, that will come to you with just the motherboard. You can optionally buy a case for it. Uh, for marine stuff, probably what I would do is I would actually stick this in some Tupperware, right? So I would just take the, the, the board itself, I'd stick it in some Tupperware, put the lid on it, uh, and that way it's not going to get, you know, salt air uh, and get corrosion and stuff like that. Uh, and then maybe what you do is you just cut a little hole in the Tupperware, put the, the cables in, a little bit of hot glue around them or something like that. And you get a nice little airtight seal. Um, and that should probably be pretty good for, for most people. So Raspberry Pi, we'll look at that, that shortly. But this is a, a tiny little uh, computer. Right. This computer is going to go run Linux. And that might be a little bit intimidating. Don't worry about it. Um, nothing that we're going to be talking about here is going to require you to get on the command line or do anything advanced. You're just going to have a little desktop. You click around, you launch open CPN, and then basically that's where you're going to live for most of this. There's going to be a couple other applications and stuff that you need to go configure, uh, but it's very, very straightforward. This, you don't need to have any real technical abilities uh, above and beyond just basic desktop computer usage to go set this up. So the Raspberry Pi is great uh, because it runs on USB, right? So it basically has a little uh, micro USB. They actually just came out with a brand new one of these, uh, the Raspberry Four, Pi 4 today. Uh, so I think that one uses uh, USB-C and it might be a little bit higher power. Uh, but for us, probably the Raspberry Pi 3 is the way to go. Um, it's not very powerful. Um, you're not going to be playing video games on this or doing anything like that. Um, but it's, um, it's got about a gig of RAM, um, and it's got, I think, four processor cores. 
So similar to kind of like a little bit of an older cell phone in terms of power. But the great thing about that is, is the amount of power that it consumes is negligible. Um, so at max, it takes about two amps at five volts. So if we're looking at a 12 volt system, uh, basically we can go convert that over to 10 volts really easily. Uh, so basically that's one amp, right? So if you, you know, um, <laughs> uh, basically if it's, you know, uh, five volts, uh, two amps, it's gonna be 10 volts, one amp, right? And then because we're 12 volts, uh, it's gonna be a little bit uh, less than that. So we're probably looking at like 0.8 amps at max, 0.85, something like around that range. Um, so, so very, very low power draw. And that's at maximum, right? So that's when this thing is really, really, really chugging along, trying to do a whole bunch of processing stuff. And we're not going to be doing that very often. So we're probably looking at maybe, you know, um, half an amp, uh, something like that. So for, for a chart plotting right, computer. So that's really, really great. Um, it does a bunch of other stuff that we're going to talk about uh, as we kind of go through this. But the core functionality that I want to talk about is the, is the chart plotting and the AIS piece, because I think that's going to be the highest value. So we get the Raspberry Pi, uh, and the idea is that there's a whole bunch of things that people would traditionally plug into this uh, that'll be really useful. So they have a GPS, right? So they plug it into that via USB, and then they would have um, uh, maybe um, something called an RTL SDR, which is a real-time Linux software-defined radio. Um, and this allows you to go ahead and uh, get AIS and VHF and um, uh, HF, which is like ham, uh, radio stuff. All right, so um, basically what happened is, is the Raspberry Pi being so cheap, uh, being so easy to use, uh, and the fact that OpenCPN was around made this a really nice little chart plotter. So if you want the absolute most basic kind of version of what I'm going to talk about, you could just go on Amazon, you could buy a little hockey puck uh, USB GPS, and you could go plug it into a Raspberry Pi. You could also get an RTL uh, SDR, and you can go ahead and plug it into your Raspberry Pi. Now, if you don't want to go use a Raspberry Pi, you could just substitute that piece with your Windows computer or your Mac. Uh, and just go plug those in there. And that's a decent sort of basic chart plotter, right? But this is incredibly low power. So that's that's sort of the base of this kind of um, you know, setting up. So we'll talk about uh, the RTL SDR stuff a, a little bit more in this, this video. Um, but this was a great kind of idea. Um, so what we do, this is sort of the hardware side. Um, and then on the software side, right, we had uh, OpenCPN. So we go ahead and install OpenCPN on Raspberry Pi. And there's a bunch of other programs that are out there that are also very useful for, um, you know, a, a chart plotter or, or like a navigation computer, that kind of thing. Um, some of them are for uh, like weather fact stuff. Right, so there'll be weather fact software that you could go ahead and install on here. <clears throat> and then we could go ahead and install things like um, uh, something called Signal K, which allows you to go ahead and have a whole bunch of devices uh, send like NEMA uh, information to a, a central hub. This basically functions like a multiplexer. Uh, and, um, and that might be sort of a, uh, a term that some people are not familiar with, but I, I'm guessing for a lot of you guys as sailors, that's something you're familiar with already. So a multiplexer is a device that takes um, signals or, or information from a bunch of devices and presents it as one thing, right? So you see this a lot when you have NEMA. Uh, so you can go ahead and have this come in from NEMA 2000 uh, or NEMA um, 0183. Is it NMEA? I always forget. Um, <laughs> I'm saying NEMA, that sounds better in my mind, but this might be N-M-E-A, one, one of the two anyway. Uh, but the idea is you can go send all those devices in here and then we can get that information in one place. We'll talk about this more later on. So there's a bunch of different things that sort of naturally kind of fit with, with Raspberry Pi. So this is really low power, right? And then we have software that's really useful and then we have hardware that's really, really useful. So 
um, this group uh, came about uh, called Open Plotter, right? Right. So it's basically just a project. Um, it's it's completely free. It's open source. Uh, and what they did is they said, let's take a collection of all of these utilities, and we're just going to go create a version of Linux that you can go download, you can put on an SD card, and you can plug that into your uh, Raspberry Pi, and then boom, you have everything ready to go. Right. So they did that with the, the software side. And they give this all away for free. Right, so there's no cost with Open Plotter. That's basically just a pre-configured OpenCPN setup with a bunch of additional utilities that are already pre-installed. So the next thing is is that you know there's a bunch of utilities like the the hardware that we're talking about uh, with you know the GPS uh, with the RTL SDR, but other things as well. So like a like a, a barometric sensor, um, a magnetic sensor. Um, um, you know, um, a tilt sensor, like accelerometer, um, things like that, gyroscope, basically. So there are all these kind of different hardware things. And they said, well, let's go create a device, right? So the software is for free, but we're going to go create a device uh, called the Motissier hat. Uh, that basically does all of this stuff, right? So you can just get one thing. And the idea is that you could go ahead and take your Raspberry Pi. Um, so you get your Raspberry Pi, you install Open Plotter on it, and then you go ahead and plug this Motissier hat onto it. And you have basically all the devices that you would need uh, for chart plotting uh, and also AIS reception. So the other great thing about this is Raspberry Pi, right? is going to cost you about 35 bucks, right? So not free, but really, really cheap. Um, now for a lot of people, you'll also need to get a micro SD card and you'll also want to go get a, a USB plug for it and maybe a case and things like that. So you can, you can add more onto it and, and can cost a little bit more money, but it's pretty cheap. Um, and then what we can go ahead and do is we can get a Motissier hat, right? And then this is going to cost you about $100. So, you know, between the two, you can go get, you know, a, a chart plotter that's doing AIS stuff uh, for, you know, less than $150, right? Pretty easily. Um, and then if you want to go add more things to it, that's optional. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on. And we'll get into more detail in some of the, the follow-up videos. So a couple things that... Uh, I talked about with Rebecca uh, that are, are useful to, to, to know. So the first thing is, is where do you get a Raspberry Pi, right? So one of the first places you can go look at is just Amazon. So if you just go search for Raspberry Pi, you can go ahead and find that in a whole bunch of different places, right? So um, you can so see that we come back with a whole bunch of these. A lot of these are sort of set up as, you know, kits and stuff. Um, so they have the, the power plug and maybe a case and things like that. So you can see these being a little bit more expensive than the, uh, the, the $35 ones. Uh, but you can also just go to raspberrypi.org. Uh, let me go clear this out. So again, I, I mentioned I was recorded a version of this before and then had a student interrupt me, which is, which is valid. They're paying money to, to have my time. So I, I got to kind of pause when they, when they sort of uh, ask me to, to help them out. So <clears throat> this is the new Raspberry Pi version 4. It basically looks identical to a Raspberry Pi uh, version 3. And you can see that this is starting at $35. The, the new ones uh, have um, you know, more power, so this is going to be a little bit faster. And this one can get up to 4 gigs of RAM. So as an aside, if you wanted a really nice little media center computer for your boat, um, you can go install this and then use that and plug it onto your, um, you know, you get a TV on the boat, you play your videos on there, maybe little video games and stuff. Nothing really graphically, you know, intensive, but it'll play movies and stuff like that really nicely. So that's that's really, really nice. So this is the Raspberry Pi. And one of the things you can go do is if you go to um, buy, there's a section here somewhere. Uh, if you go to products, probably is the best way to do it. Um, and Raspberry Pi Model 3 is uh, the main one that we'd want to go ahead and use with this. Um, so if we go down here, uh, Raspberry Pi, well, model B. Uh, here we go. So this is sort of the, the full version. 
Uh, if I go click on this, um, it's going to take me to a page where hopefully if it loads, it'll give me information. I'll reload that. All right, there we go. Uh, they just updated their um, uh, product. So they have a new new version today. So I'm guessing that they might have a, a little bit more um, traffic to their website. So it might be a little bit slow or something like that. So the idea here is you can see here that we've got this little device. It's really neat. Very, very small. Um, and if we go look at where to go buy this, so what you can do is scroll all the way down to the bottom and let's get this little buy now thing. And you can go pick your country um, and you can see that this is pretty much available across the world. So if Amazon doesn't make sense in your environment um, and you're in Estonia, just select Estonia and then it will, it will show you a website that you can go buy it from, right? So uh, that's the idea. Um, also, they guarantee that they're gonna continue making these uh, until 2023. Right, so uh, basically for each model that they come out with, because a lot of times this is used in industrial use, uh, they'll sort of say how long the lifetime is going to be for this device. So that's really nice. Um, additionally, the, um, the, the form factor has been very consistent over the years. So you can actually go use a Model 2 uh, with Open Plotter, and it basically will work. It's the exact same layout as the, the Model 3. Uh, it just has uh, a slower processor, right? So the Raspberry 4 actually is the, the first one that's changed the, the layout, and it's very, very small changes, just the power um, and the, the video out. So the Raspberry Pi 3 has a full-size HDMI. The new ones have a, a mini, um, and then they have micro USB power as opposed to USB-C. But this is, this is basically the board. So you can get them from Amazon. You can get them from somewhere in, in you know local for your country. So if you're cruising around the world and you're, you know, you know, maybe if you're, you know, out in, in French Polynesia, it might be difficult. Uh, but if you're most places, you can get these. Um, so this is, this is really, really nice. So one of the things that you'll see is that it's got a get it starting guide over here. Um, and this is sort of more or less what I'm going to talk about when I, you know, go through setting this up and installing it. So it's going to talk about how to go get this configured, how to go plug it in. Um, and then you can go through the process of, you know, the different models that, that they have, the power supply requirements for it, how to go install the uh, SD card. Um, it's very friendly because this is made for, for students. Um, so, you know, the documentation around this is really, 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 really good. Um, so you can go ahead and get a bunch of adapters for depending what you we want to go do with this. We then need to install the operating system. So here they're having us download um, Raspberry Pi or Raspbian, which is their operating system or something like that. Instead, what we would do is we would go to openplotter.org, um, which is uh, this site. It's also saleoog.com. I guess that's the people behind the project. But if you go to openplotter.org, it'll take you there, and you can download the version of um, their distribution, which basically is, is already set up for you uh, from there. Right. So I know this is a lot, but it's it's really very very useful. So once you get that installed. Um, you can now start using this as a chart plotter. And the, uh, the easiest way, I think, is to go ahead and get this Motissier hat uh, adapter. And you can see here that basically what it does is it just plugs on top like a Lego. It's one of the really neat things about a Raspberry Pi is it's designed so you can add stuff on top of it that extend the functionality. And this has your GPS, it has your AIS receiver, um, it has um, a barometer, it has all that kind of stuff just built right onto it and just clicks right on there. Um, and then all of a sudden, turn it on and you've got all that stuff ready to go. So um, if for some reason um, you have to go install this um, in a part of your boat that has a lot of metal or magnets around it, uh, that might interfere with the GPS. So they have an external um, you know, uh, plug for your GPS that you can go ahead and connect to. And they also have this little adapter uh, that you can go connect to uh, a VHF antenna, right? So by connecting that to a VHF antenna, you can get your AIS targets uh, integrated into, you know, uh, OpenCPN, right? Which is which is great. So it also gives you um, because it's got the compass and it's got the gyroscope. It's going to give you heel, trim, all that kind of stuff for your boat, um, and works, you know, just generally really nicely. Um, so you basically get up open plotter installed and then you can go ahead and get this functionality, right? So 
Um, that's really, really, really neat. Um, and I'm, I'll sort of jump over here to the open plotter section. Let me close this out. Uh, nope. Uh, go back over here, and we'll look at all the different stuff that it has um, available as part of open plotter. So if I go click on open plotter again. So these are the different pieces that are installed with it, right? So uh, we've got OpenCPN uh, already set up and sort of pre-configured. Um, so that's really, really easy. Um, it's got Zygrib, which basically allows you to go ahead and pull down Grib files. <clears throat> it's got uh, SDR AIS support, which is the ability to go um, get that AIS information from that antenna. Um, and then it also has support for adding uh, NMEA. So, and yeah, I always think it's NEMA, but it's NMA, I guess. <laughs> uh, addition. And NEMA 0183, you're probably familiar with. This is the old serial connections that, that we used to use back in the day. And they're great. And if you have a boat like the one that I have, um, it has a bunch of older equipment on it. So I've got a really nice uh, Furuno radar, uh, but it's, it's using NMEA 0183. So what happened is, is that most people have moved over to, to NEMA 2000, right? And this is probably a, a, a something I'll get into in more detail in, a, in another video. But the problem with NEMA 2000 is it's a, it's a proprietary protocol. So that means that people can't just use this um, on, its, on its own. Um, so one of the things that this means is, is that it allows marine electronics companies to artificially inflate the prices of their hardware because other folks can't interact with it unless they pay a license to go use uh, NEMA 2000. Additionally, if they do use NEMA 2000, they're not allowed to give any information to other people. So it makes it very difficult for um, new vendors to get into the market uh, and disrupt things. Uh, it makes it very difficult for you to have compatibility between devices sometimes. So a lot of times you'll see people that use exclusively a BNG system or exclusively a Raymarine system, even though they're NEMA 2000 and they technically should all be able to talk to each other, sometimes they kind of don't. So that's where SignalK comes in. <clears throat> SignalK is a new protocol, relatively. It's about five years old, um, that allows you to go use standard internet protocol, IP, um, just like you would use to connect to any PC on the internet, any server on the internet, and like you have on your local LAN or wireless. And what this does is it basically sets up an address where everything can go send it to the SignalK server, and then it can rebroadcast that to all the other devices. So what you can do is you can get adapters for NEMA 0183, and adapters for NEMA 2000, and once they're on SignalK, you can access that information from everywhere. This is getting a little bit more into the advanced stuff, but this allows you to go extend the functionality of this. So the example that I gave um, Rebecca and, and Patrick is if you wanted to, you could go get a little microcontroller. Uh, and a lot of people are out there who know how to do this now because microcontrollers also have gotten much easier in the last few years. And you could go get um, a, a little open circuit on there. And you could have two little wires, right? Just really, really simple. And you could put them in the bilge, right? And if there was water in between those uh, two wires, that would create a circuit, and then it could go send off an alarm. And a lot of people say, well, I've got a bilge alarm. Why would I care about that? Well, this is connected to the internet. And this is a real computer. So if I have something like a hotspot, um, and you have that on your boat, so your boat is connected, or you have Wi-Fi at your boat, maybe you're at a marina, uh, what you could do is you could actually have this, you know, email you, uh, or send an alert to your phone, or, or potentially call you, or something, um, to alert you that there all of a sudden is water in the bilge above this high water mark. That might be really, really useful. So <clears throat> it's an interesting idea. The other piece of this um, is that it has the ability to integrate with autopilot. Right? So this is the part that I want to pause on. This is a really, really, really interesting idea. Uh, it runs something called PyPilot. Uh, and it allows you to basically replace a very expensive autopilot controller uh, with uh, PyPilot. PyPilot is pretty well tested, it seems like, with small boat autopilots. So um, your, your Raymarine tiller pilot kind of thing. 
right? So those. Um, this seems to work very, very well with those. There's some testing with other ones. Um, this is one where your mileage may vary, right? RTL, SDR, very, very well understood. Um, Raspberry Pi, very, very well understood. Uh, Open CPN, very well understood. This is newer, right? So when it comes to the autopilot stuff, if you are technical, if you're already familiar with this stuff, if you want to play around with this, this is potentially really interesting. If you're somewhere that you cannot get an autopilot, you're way out in the boonies, um, and you, you know, want to hook this up to your, your system and, and try to get that working, that could be, you know, a lifesaver. Um, but I think for most people, if you already have an autopilot controller, if you have a system that that's doing that, that, that's potentially a good thing to look at. Now, personally on my boat, this is something I'm looking at because I've been having problems with, um, you know, my, um, you know, my autopilot computer. Um, so that's something that I'm, I'm considering looking at and I'll probably delve into, but I also used to work at Microsoft uh, and I was giving a lecture at Google two weeks ago. So that's part of my, you know, personality. I tinker with things. I, I'm, I'm comfortable uh, reading and writing code. Um, so, you know, it may not be, might not be for everybody. And there's a bunch of other stuff that you can go ahead and do, but there's a couple other things that are really, really useful and important about this, which is, with your Raspberry Pi, it has a Wi-Fi adapter on there. So you can actually set it up as a Wi-Fi access point, or if you have a network on your boat already, you can join it to that uh, Wi-Fi access point. And at that point, you can go connect to it remotely. And you can do this a couple different ways. You can do this through you know, an iPad, you can do this through a phone, uh, and you can get right to the desktop. But if additionally, if you're using something like Signal K, and a lot of the stuff will already be exposed by Signal K. So your heading, your speed, all that kind of stuff that it can go calculate with GPS and magnetic, you know, you know, all that kind of stuff, compass, all that. So all that'll be exposed via um, Signal K. So you can either go to it in a web browser um, and you can go ahead and see all this kind of stuff really nicely. And in fact, I think if I do uh, a quick search for Signal K, This is going to um, show us, uh, I think they have a demo here that we can go ahead and use. Yeah, so if I go click on demo, um, this is gonna go ahead and show us an example uh, system. So this is basically not real information, obviously, but it's you know, just sort of a, an example that you can go see. So this is the kind of web uh, site that would actually be running on your local Raspberry Pi on your boat, right? So basically have a version of this. So this is giving you information about Signal K itself, um, and it's also saying, you know, the stuff that we're getting, right? So we can then go look at the web apps and then we have a whole bunch of different stuff on here. So here I'm going to go ahead and look at, um, you know, the first one. Um, so this is going to go ahead and show an example uh, of a, you know, device. So that obviously this isn't real data, but this is showing us your thing. We can go ahead and sort of, um, you know, zoom in. Uh, we can go ahead and see, you know, all this kind of stuff. This is all running over a web browser. So that means that you can go access this from any device. You can access this from your iPad. You can access this from another computer. You can access this from your phone and it will be set up more or less accordingly for that. So this is one of the sort of predefined ones that are installed, uh, just kind of ready to go, right? So if we then go ahead and look at another example one, <clears throat> go back to our web apps, um, let's say sail gauge, right? So this is, a, this is another uh, really useful one. So this is just kind of showing us you know, our heading um, and kind of what's going on with, uh, with you know, where we're going um, and, you know, basic stuff like that, right? So uh, pretty simple. If I go back over here to simple gauges, um, this is going to be exactly what it, it shows like. So I'm, I'm really, really zoomed in here. So if I kind of zoom out a little bit, you can see that we get some, some gauges here. Um, so you can go ahead and have that on, again, iPad or any kind of screen that you wanted and you can go ahead and uh, adjust these. You can also go add, you know, new sources. You can go look at a log of the stuff. I guess this is, you know, it's not real data, so it's, it's, it's not really showing us that. Um, but, you know, you can go ahead and look at speed over ground. If you have things like depth sensors uh, attached to it, you can go see those, um, you know, see your heading. So <clears throat> if you think about the cost of, you know, buying multi, 
um, multi-purpose gauges or sort of replacing those, um, you know, this this can do that too. Um, so here's another instrument panel. And again, all of this stuff is, you know, basically free. Um, you know, so this is an, another example. So this one has a bunch of different stuff on it. And then the, the nice thing about this one is that you can go ahead and unlock it and then you can go change the settings. So for what you want to go add to this, right? So you can go add more widgets and stuff if you want to go ahead and, and do those. There's other things that we can go add depending on what information is being sent to the uh, OpenCPN server. So <clears throat> again, if we just go back and look at it, we can go see our heading. <clears throat> we can go see our speed through the water. You can see the course over ground, uh, speed over ground. Um, you know, this is probably one of these is the the one with magnetic variant. No, because this is uh, true and this is a magnetic. <clears throat> you can look at your wind speed, all, all that kind of stuff, right? So <clears throat> again, this is, you know, not perfect, but it's it's pretty nice. I mean, this, this you know, might just be kind of looking weird because I'm weirdly zoomed in. Uh, but if I zoomed out a little bit more, if I was looking at another kind of device that might render a little bit better. Um, I'm also using edge here because I can, I can annotate it. Um, <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. This is uh, another one that we can go ahead and look at. Um, so this one has um, AIS targets on it. Um, if I don't know if they'll actually show it to us, but um, can I zoom in over here? Let's see. So this is where our boat's supposed to be. All right, so I don't know if that'll sort of really give us a good sort of example for that kind of stuff, but <clears throat> but yeah, so you can you could go ahead and look at AIS target. So the idea is it's really really nice. Or you could also go ahead and just connect to the desktop and have OpenCPN running, but have that in your um, iPad or, or, or your laptop. And the great thing is if you're on your laptop, you know, it might be using a decent amount of power. So you can go check this. You could close it down when you want to get more information. And then otherwise, you could just be looking at, you know, your iPad or your phone to go check this stuff. Um, <clears throat> also, because it's on IP, if you choose to, you can go set this up so it's all visible remotely. So... You know, you can go look at all your gauges and, you know, you could have things like, you know, sensors and stuff. <clears throat> and then if I go to something like, um, um, let's see, the, um, I use Android. So if I go look at uh, Signal K, Android, <clears throat> there's a bunch of different apps you can go ahead and use. Um, so, um, so if I go look for Signal K Android, you can go see that there's going to be um, a bunch of different uh, applications that you can go ahead and use to, to go look at this kind of stuff that you can go look at. So um, this is Sailboat APK. I haven't really used very many of these. Um, and I know that there's some really nice ones for iOS. Um, so if you've got an iPad, uh, there's a, let's see, iOS. Oops, what just happened there? iOS Signal K. So, ba -ba -ba. let's see, I think this actually might be a way to do it. So this is, okay. So this is a list of different sort of devices. Um, you know, uh, we can get Fairwind, we can get, you know, a bunch of different uh, sort of devices and looks like things that we can go ahead and use to, to view this. So signal view, it sounds like is, a, is an example one. All right, so let's go. Not sure why that's not opening up. So let's see. Oh, well. I'm not going to go spend a whole bunch of time boring you to death while I go look things up, but there's a bunch of apps that you can go use on your, on your phone or your tablet uh, to go ahead and view this. It'll be, you know, really nice and sort of set up. And basically they just need to be on the same Wi-Fi network um, to, to go view all that stuff. So that's, that's more or less sort of a general kind of introduction to, uh, OpenCPN uh, via OpenPlotter and all the kind of different stuff that they have available for you. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a pretty cheap way to go implement this. So it's something I think that a lot of you guys could look into uh, as either a way to kind of get started uh, or a way to go ahead and um, use as a backup. So I'll try to go follow this video up with an example of doing an install uh, and then maybe a quick overview of using uh, OpenPlotter on the desktop and kind of get that to, to get started. So I uh, hope that was helpful. Um, again, 
you know, don't recommend that you rip out and replace all your, your stuff and, you know, only do things that you feel comfortable with on, on your boat. So, um, yeah, take care.